What's up guys, it's Kaze here. I was actually hoping to get another video out to you guys last week, but WWE hasn't released the WrestleMania 40 behind the curtain doc yet, so that one's gonna have to wait. So with The Rock riding off into the sunset, for now, and Triple H issuing a new era, I wanted to take a look at the lay of the land. There's actually a lot to be excited for. We've got two first time world champions. The mid card titles are more relevant than they've been in a decade. WWE's tag division is actually fun again. And the women's division has more stars that we want to see probably now more than ever. Not to mention the WWE draft is also returning soon. So I want to assess the major storylines in WWE and see what they imply for the future in this new era moving forward. I don't want to have too long of an intro, I just ask you like and subscribe, and without further ado, let's get into it. <sighs> so after what was, in my opinion, one of the greatest WrestleMania main events of all time, The Rock and Cody Rhodes come face to face on Monday Night Raw, and The Rock tells Cody, although his story with Roman may be finished. Their story is just beginning. And I'm glad to hear because The Rock was very much so the dominant figure throughout their back and forth on the lead up to WrestleMania. And hopefully when he does come back, it's a lot less one-sided. But I do think that means Cody is in store for a fairly long title reign, at least until The Rock comes back and possibly costs him the title. WWE's also done a good job at preserving a lot of rivalries for Cody Rhodes. Like since returning to WWE, he's only feuded with a handful of people. So now that he's champion, there's actually a lot of fresh opponents for him to face in WWE. We actually found out on SmackDown that it'll either be LA Knight or AJ Styles that faces Cody Rhodes next. And you know Roman's in his hyperbolic chamber trying to reach Super Saiyan 3. So the Drew McIntyre and CM Punk feud is pretty big right now. With The Rock out of the picture and Roman barely around, Drew McIntyre is actually the biggest heel in the company right now. Now the rivalry can't get physical for quite some time, but they've shown in the past few months that they can sell a story with very minimum physical altercations. I also think CM Punk is a little bit more healthier than WWE would let us believe. In Punk's now infamous interview with Ariel Hawani, he trashed AEW, but he also revealed that if it was up to him, he'd be wrestling now. And for the first time ever, it's doctors telling him that he shouldn't wrestle versus the other way around. I feel like with Drew losing the title so quickly, it's quite possible that they plan on moving forward with a Punk and Drew feud, at least a lot sooner than later. So what Sami Zayn and Chad Gable have been doing for the past few months, actually very good. I love the direction they're going with Chad Gable, and he's really showing all ranges of his character, the in-ring and the promo segments. And there's actually speculation that he may turn heel next week in Sami Zayn's hometown. If they take his character seriously as a heel, he and Sami can have some possible five-star matches throughout the entire summer. And the storyline's there for this to be a very good feud. Chad was the one to help Sami get the title, and now he's the one that's going to try and take it away from him. Definitely needed in order for Sami to have a fresh title reign. So Damian Priest is facing Jey Uso for the World Heavyweight Championship. And I'll get to the latest on Jey in a second. And as far as Damian Priest goes in the Judgment Day, I think there's some serious potential there. You got Rhea Ripley, who's kind of the female Roman Reigns, and nobody's acknowledging it. Dominic Mysterio is still one of the biggest heels in the company, and it's interesting to see that they have some dysfunction going on with him inviting other people into the group. Damian Priest has the look WWE wants, he's funny, then he can be serious when he wants to be. He can also put on really good matches. And Finn Balor and JD can continue to run the tag circuit. I love what they're doing with R-Truth, he's truly a gem in WWE. R-Truth has kind of become the Sami Zayn to their bloodline, but he's causing a lot more dysfunction. And they're still doing it in a way that it's unpredictable. I still can't really tell you where this is going. And that's a good thing. Side note, whoever thought John Cena getting a hot tag from The Miz would get such a pop. Ilya Dragunov made his Raw debut. Very excited to see him on the main roster. I'm hoping they find a way to make stars more immediately impactful once they debut or shortly after. I understand the point of a slow build and we have to slowly invest more and more into them until we really want them to win. And in some cases, that is the way to go. But I'm not a fan of having stars like Jade Cargill, who debuted like 
three months ago and she still doesn't have like a formidable feud going on. I feel like stars like Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, even Finn Balor to a lesser degree, were so impactful because when they debuted on Raw, they were immediately in the ring with John Cena or in Finn Balor's case winning two Fatal 4 ways and then eventually facing Seth Rollins at SummerSlam. I'm not saying every debut has to be that, but to know that a threat has just arrived is always fun to watch. Now, I said I would mention Jay earlier, and I was saving it in order to talk about the bloodline in entirety. In Roman's absence, Solo Sokoa has taken over the bloodline, and there's a new member in town. So Tama Tonga debuts on SmackDown, and he joins the bloodline, and their first order of business was kicking Jimmy out. Now, this is a huge opportunity for Solo to become a much bigger star, but this sets up a possible tag team match between the Bloodline 2.0 and the Usos. And I'm hoping that Jimmy gets a chance to really shine and gets more opportunity this time around, just because his character kind of took a hit when he rejoined with Roman after initially turning on him. And it just seems like the Bloodline is a storyline that keeps on giving. So many stars made from just one storyline. I really wanted to just touch base with all the things that we can be excited for moving forward in the upcoming future. I do have another video that I'm planning on releasing this week, so stay tuned. That's pretty much it for this one. Please like and subscribe. We're on the road to 5,000. That sounds so crazy to say, but we're doing it. Put your seatbelt back on, and until next time, keep it kaze.